Father Lord, we come before your person this afternoon. Father Lord, we come on this service before you this afternoon, dear Father Lord. Father Lord, as families and friends come together to say their final farewell, dear Father Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, dear Father Lord, that you will give them strength, dear Father Lord, where they are weak, dear Father Lord, you give them strength in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, dear Father Lord. Father Lord, we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will wipe their tears, dear Father Lord, knowing that you call them home to a better place, dear Father Lord. Father Lord, they need them on earth, dear Father Lord, but Father Lord, you need them all, dear Father Lord. You have work for him to do, dear Father Lord. And Father Lord, we say thank you, dear Father Lord. Thank you, dear Father Lord. We ask you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you will touch every family member here, dear, dear Father Lord. Father Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will comfort them.
somebody sitting in a bench. And then we have three persons. Now let me tell you, I'm telling you this. Because I went to a funeral and they stopped the funeral. I don't want to disturb this one. So here what? Just switch, just find some space. Yeah? Those are not so close to the person next to you. Yeah? Just a little space. Just a little space. You know we have a police in the house. Yeah? Yes. So let's just get some space. Shall we are ready? Okay, let's go. Yeah. 
And with their help, they were able to help the business grow and prosper. Richard always demanded excellence and never settled for less. This was evident in everything he did, especially in his business. After several years of persuasion, Richard was finally comfortable with the idea of hiring someone. But I know, but well, everybody know Richard, and we know above all that he was bothered. He wanted to ensure that the reputation for his poor, high quality work would have never been compromised. Recently, they hired Brenda, and within only a month, he expressed how comfortable and impressed he was with Brenda's work. Richard loved his life. Not just his wife and children, but his Farrah Hill family, his Tobago family, his in-laws, his customers, his customers who became family. He mentored many young persons who looked up to him as a father. He always wanted to have his loved ones around. And if they couldn't make it, he would ensure that they would video call so that they could be included. Mango and avocado season was his thing. Whenever mango season and avocado season came around, he made a list of all the persons he had to arrange mangoes and avocados for. Right? When he planned his events on the hill, he would always ask for his sister-in-law, Shami. Richard believed in family and always tried to instill that no matter what, a family must always love, respect, and honor each other. He also believed that honesty was of utmost importance to be successful in life. He lived a life of peace and disliked confusion. In the last three years, Richard, he fought a good fight, and by the grace of God, with the help of his wife, his children, his Farrell Hill family, he was able to celebrate yet another accomplishment, his Fernville, in Fernville, his second home. Richard built a great life and touched the hearts of all that he encountered. He will be remembered for his humbleness, gentleness, selflessness, and most of all, his honesty. He laid a foundation and a legacy which is difficult to shatter and will continue to be admired by many. Today, as we lay him to rest, we find comfort in knowing that he was what? A good man. He was a good man. And he lived a good life. And he was loved by all that he encountered. He built a legacy. And now he is resting comfortably in the hands of our loving Father. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God is good. God is good. And all the time God is good. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. He's great. Um, <laughs> you know, um, Brother Richard was my friend. And anybody that is over the age of 15 and you could call them a friend. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And you could call them a friend. You know the kind of person that they are. Real friendly individual, you know. And I, I, I got to know him and he would always give me some kind of pickup when he see me, some kind of talk, you know. And he had an internal joy. And every time he talked to him, he would realize that the joy of the Lord was his strength. So I want to strengthen the family team and let you know that he's in a better place. Right? He's in a better place. And Brother Richard, we love him very much and we continue to love him. Amen. So we pray strength for the whole family and know that Jesus Christ is a strength. Hallelujah. That, that, yeah. So we are the new things for life. Yes. 
Heart it a beating on my chest like a drum. Blood it a running on my veins like a hot cup of bush tea. Wits like sugar. Still I got to give thanks a lot. Yes. I know all the times gonna seem so hard. Hey, still you got to hold a bit. Kiss my darling, hug up and squeeze my children. Once I've got Jesus, I know that I'll be alright. Some people want a fancy car, some people want diamond rings, some people want a big house on the hill to show off to their neighbors around them. Some people want equal rights, some people want justice, some people want. But only Jesus Christ to purify this peace and this. Hey, I know that time's gonna seem so hard. Oh, that I know it. Still got to hold the faith. Oh, that is. Some put their trust in my TV. But Jesus, you are the only one. Yes, 
Yeah. It's not so much celebration of wine because, my Lord, we have dying on every side. Yes. If it's not a debt in your family, it's a debt on the street, it's a debt in your country, it's thousands and millions of people dying all over the world. So even if this is a celebration, we know that is not a thing that somehow we don't see. Yeah, somehow we know it don't seem like it is a time for that. But at the end of the day, what I like about Richard is that Richard's smile was more than a smile. Yeah, it was more than a smile. His life was no better than just like all of us. And uh, he had his challenges. But when you hear him talk, you know that there had to be an internal joy somewhere. There had to be something inside of him that make him say to me, Pastor, I just want to go back to the Lord. I just want to go back to the Lord. And that's despite all his illnesses, despite all his personal issues, despite all his family issues, despite everything that was going on with him, his joy was God is in control. That's what joy meant for him. And not just control, but joy is in every detail of his life. You know, and I, you know what I admire about him? I said to him, boy, I feel the people who go through the most, sometimes that's the most joy. Because you know why? Because we know how to depend on Jesus. We know how to say, God, let nobody else understand. You're the one who holds my hand. So I'm thinking about Richard, and then I remember this Chinese proverb that, that says, if you wish to be happy for one day, Get drunk. Uh -huh. If you wish to be happy for three days, get married. If you wish to be happy for eight days, get up and eat it. But if you wish to be happy for a lifetime, a little fish. But the Chinese man, I guess he, he saw more pleasure in killing and eating a pig and fishing. But we cannot say that about Richard. Because Richard married his wife for how long? 30, uh, 30, 30, how much years? 34, 35, 35 years. The anniversary, the anniversary, the anniversary is gone. The anniversary is coming up. When you see Charlene, ring on the ring on finger, Richard and yes, Charlene. Always and I think I, I hold on to him, to them, in such a way that we both met our spouses at 13 years and still married. You know, that says something to us married people and those who go to get married, that marriage do last. Amen? Amen. Marriage do last. So we thank God for Richard. A happy story. It's a happy story. And we all know that Richard had, he was so soft spoken. Eh? You can have any Richard music. You can have any hear talk. But when he do talk, oh God. you're sure he's saying something to <laughs> He is going to say something that makes sense. So this scripture today tells us that we find joy in times of sorrow. And then God gives us that promise. I will turn your sorrow into joy. He says, I'm going to turn your sorrow into joy and nobody can steal that from you. So it says, a little while and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while and you will see me. So some of the disciples said to one another, what is this, this man is saying? A little while, and then you will not see me, and again a little while, and then you will see me, and because I'm going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is given birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish of the pain for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you, also, also you have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one, say no one, no one. and no one. 
but take my joy from me. No one, no situation. No, so when you leave this service here, or oh, whoever's on the line, I want this to stay in your mind, stay in your spirit, that no one can steal my joy from me. No one. You see, I like John because John have a lot of teams that talk about love and suffering and comfort and all of it. And back in chapter 14, from that same John, he was telling these people, don't let your hand be troubled. He said, don't let your hand be troubled. He said, trust in Father, trust in me also. He also told them, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He also promised them that you will not be alone after I die. After I ascended into the, to meet my Father, you will not be alone because I will send the Comforter. I will send the Holy Spirit and He will guide you to truth. And when I send that Comforter, you will be able to live a fruitful life. And he will be able to sustain you even when persecution comes. And now in chapter 16, they still come to us. They still didn't get it. They still didn't understand what he was saying. But he was saying, in a little while, you will see me no more. How much of us know when a little while you will see me no more will come? Oh. We don't know. That comes like a thief in the night as a unwelcome guest. It comes like a thief in the night, you know? And Jesus was saying, listen to me. I will be absent, but I understand that you are confused. And you know something? If I was, if I was there, I would have been confused too. Because it's human nature to be confused when you know somebody's going to die. It's human nature to be confused when you know that somebody, your loved one, is dead. You will be confused. And even though they put themselves together to suck a shushu and say, you know something about me talking about him. We talk about thank God and Jesus, even though we don't say it to him, he understands. He understands. So you know he reached to them and he said, What you're saying about yourself. It says to us that God cares about our confusion. He cares about our confusion. He knows that sometimes the person we're supposed to ask for answers, we don't and we ask everybody else. When really we're supposed to go to the man who knows all things. But we go to other people and God understands that. He knows that there are burdens that we carry. He knows there are troubles that hit us. He knows that our minds will be confused. But Jesus is saying to them, you know what? You will be. You will lament. You will cry. You will feel the pain. And you know what he said after that? He said you will feel the pain even while the world is rejoicing. Imagine that. So while you are hurting and you don't understand A from Z, the world is rejoicing at pain. The world is rejoicing and evil is rampant. The world is rejoicing because they don't understand. They don't understand what Jesus is saying. You see, none of us will escape suffering. None of us will escape trials. And the world will just be getting on there. But hear what he says. Your sorrow will turn into joy. Say that. My sorrow, whatever your sorrow is today, it will turn into joy. Say it. Believe it. Receive it. Whatever your sorrow is, it's going to turn into joy. Right? And you know why he was telling them that? Because Jesus knew, I too am going to die. I am going to die, but I will resurrect. So, yes, Friday, somebody say amen. amen. You can't have the dawn without some darkness. Somebody say amen. 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 So, anytime you find that God is hiding his purpose and we don't want to tell you everything, all you have to do is stay in his presence and trust him. That's all. Trust him, but you know, sorrows will not last always. It will not last always. So Jesus is like a teacher. He's reassuring them and he's so good. All of them understand way back in chapter 14. So let me tell you all this something. He said there is a woman, a pregnant woman. We are all of us who know who has one children. We know. We know about labor pain. Pressure. Plenty labor pain. And even though you go through the labor pain and all of that, and you get frustrated and you get tired. The joy comes when? When the baby is born. 
The joy comes when the baby is born. And Jesus, you know, he said that to give them that illustration to say that even though Jesus would go down and he would go and they would bury him and he would go behind the stone into the tomb, he would resurrect again. And when he resurrects, the joy comes. But the joy of the Lord is our what? Our strength. So God will not substitute. Or he will replace your joy, praise your sorrow with joy in He will turn your joy into sorrow. Turn your sorrow into joy. Why? The same thing that causes your sorrow, the same thing that causes your sorrow will cause your joy. Imagine that. Imagine that. I know somebody, you know, if Richard would say something today, I know he would say, as I hear him say a few times, your happiness, you are responsible for your happiness. Exactly. You are responsible for your happiness. So free yourself from every negative vibe, like what you would say. Free yourself from all the negative energy. Because you are responsible. So the Lord is about, and I listen to me, if God is going to take that thing that's giving you headache, that thing that's giving you heartache, then God may be he's about to turn that same thing into your joy. Somebody say amen. amen. We only receive things as if it were. We don't see it, but by faith we receive it. So the joy of the Lord will make everything all right. Everything all right. John 15 says, Jesus says, my joy will remain in you. My joy will remain in you and your touch, your joy will be full. It will be full. So you can declare that nobody will steal my joy. From the Francis family. To everybody who's supporting the Francis, yes. Because this is something, even though we are going to pick it now, there is a confidence that you could choose praise instead of hate. There is a confidence that you have a real hope. A real hope is that Jesus is going to see me through. Because the joy is something that is inside. And no, nothing that happens external can interfere with your joy. Because it's an inside joy. Yes? So, this joy that God is giving us because he's alive and he's resurrected, and it is a, and again you will see me. Maybe he's coming back again, right? He's coming back again. But he's coming back again. And we will see Richard there. Only if we keep that joy. Only if the joy of the Lord is our strength. Because if we have no strength out of you will not make it. You will not make it. So Richard was such a good steward. I believe that a message not just for us, friends, family, and neighbors, but for the church, is that the world needs to see a church that has an invincible joy. That's right. Amen. Amen. The world, hear what I say, the world. Take, let's take our mind out of just this little space that we sometimes feel we are in. Right. But the world needs to see that the church has an invincible joy in the midst of sorrow and death. Death right, left, and center. And we could be sorrowful we yet rejoicing. Why are we rejoicing? Because we have Jesus. You know what it says? When Jesus is absent, there is no joy. That is why you can cry. Because if Jesus is not there, you do not have joy. You may have some happiness and that's fleeting. That's temporary. But the joy that we need, the joy that people need to see, is what the church need to show that so that people will have some strength. Yes, yes. People will have some strength. You know, I was telling somebody, hey, then, look at all the going on and then I say, you know why you're saying that? Because it didn't reach home by you. But if it reach home by you, you will realize how much you need the joy of the Lord yes. to carry on. So our joy is not in family people. All of us, we love all the family, amen. But our joy is being in the families. Our joy is not in the job that you have because they can order tomorrow and tell you, you have no more job. Let's yeah, take off this stuff. And our job is not in the finances. Let's yeah, take off this stuff. This stuff. Anyway. So it's not in that. Don't let nobody see your joy that comes from above. The joy that is inside. The joy that will hold you together. Because Jesus is a keeper. 
and it satisfies our every longing in the midst of all that even if the world is rejoicing and everything is not good we can rejoice because our God is good all the time and all the time he is so that you cannot steal our joy that will not steal your joy the Richard family that can't steal your joy because that didn't give you that joy the world cannot steal your joy because it didn't give it to you anyway. Yes, pride cannot steal your joy. Nothing can steal your joy. Or that to you. Where is your sting? You have no sting. You have no sting. So people, we are fully persuaded that Christ in a little while, he will come again. In a little while. You know, some people said he had not enough. Don't wait for it. Don't wait for him to tell you enough. Yeah, you're not ready. Now is a good time to get ready. Right. Now is a good time for that joy that you need when you pray to give it to So now is a good time because he's coming back again. And you see why he's coming back? No, neither threats, nor persecution, nor any man or any situation supposed to shoot your feet. None. None. The one who rests in the promises of Christ and prays in Jesus' name according to the will of God, something incredible takes place. Your sorrow turns into joy. And this will be the joy that nobody could take from you. So, we will see Richard again. I don't know about you. How many people will see Richard again? The rest of you are not sure. Because maybe you need the Lord. Give it that joy now. That in spite of how much death pass, as long as you're in the Lord, or if you die today or tomorrow, you're in the Lord, you will see all who you need to see. All your loved ones. Yes? Because Jesus is going to come back. And when he comes back, then we will have complete joy. No more tears. No more sorrows. No more nothing that's bad because he will be our complete joy. But for now, weeping may endure for a night. But guess what comes in the morning? What comes in the morning? Joy. I hope this is some of your mornings. I hope this thing is evening is your morning. Yes, that your joy comes in the morning and God will see you through. All you have to do is fix your eyes on him. Look at this wonderful face and see that Jesus is a joy. So, don't let anything steal your joy. But remember, the reality is, we are in a war. We are in a war, people. Yes? And the enemy is attacking us. He's stealing from us. He's taking our families, so we'll be sad. And our jobs, so that we'll be sad. But listen to me, don't let him. Satan has no authority over you. No authority for you who believe in Christ Jesus. No authority for you who really could call on his name. Don't allow him to rob you or steal your joy from you. Yeah? So I say, I say at every funeral, every funeral, I'm going to watch. But I say at every funeral, time is too short. Come on. Time is too short not to have joy and bring joy to somebody else. Oh. How many people here have come and bring this family to the Richard family? That's you? But well, we're going to pray for the family. If you are a family member, come up here. If you are a family member, we know we can't jump up. So just stand where you are. All family members. We're going to get accustomed to this new normal. Yes? Our family members. So Richard and give me this. It says, I am home in heaven, dear ones. Oh, so happy and so bright. There is a perfect joy and beauty in the everlasting light. All the pain and grief is over. Every restless toss in past. I am now at peace forever, safe behold in heaven. Did you wonder? I so calmly tried to buy off the shade. 
we more than the assurance of that the best is still yet to come. And I pray, God, that the best will come, will manifest itself in their lives, in their family lives. Father, Lord, every person that we love.